avid readers, book nerds, or casual observers. Welcome to the Read Along, brought to you by the Lit Round Table. I'm Anna. And I'm Joseph. And this is our discussion of The Lies of Locke Lamora, book one of the Gentleman Bastard series by Scott Lynch. So, ready to talk about Lies of Locke Lamora. Yes. I'm going to set my timer, even though I don't know that we need to set a timer for this one, because I don't have a yeah, time to say. These, <laughs> these chapters were definitely set up. I mean, yes. they were they were entertaining. Um, not as intense as the last couple. No, not at all. So chapter 12 was called The Fat Priest of Talvera, mm-hmm. which we find out that Jean and Locke are in hiding, basically, mm-hmm. with some new buddies that Jean has made while Locke has been incapacitated. Mm-hmm. Um and, and one of them is a doctor, kind of. Yes. Her, his name is Master Ibelius. Yeah. Is that how the... Yeah, that's how I've been pronouncing it in my head anyway. Okay. Um, and he's very chatty. Yeah. And I kind of enjoy him. He is fun. He's He just says whatever's on his mind. Um, and calls Locke out for being stupid, which I kind of appreciate. Because he mm-hmm. he's very foolhardy. He just, like, jumps into things without thinking too hard about them sometimes. Um... And then we also learn that Jean is pretending to be a part of the um, Order of the Lady Most Kind, who is also Death, right? Yeah, that she's that's like her? that's like the religion of Camor's Death sect. Like that's the god yeah. that they uh, worship is basically the goddess of death. Yeah. So the Lady Most Kind. Yeah, the Lady Most Kind. Mm-hmm. So, which is interesting because mm-hmm. he gets to like intimidate people. As a priest of this, basically, like, death cult. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny how he ends up, like, because he kind of studied with them, but, he like, did, bailed yeah. when on he was, it. When he was early. younger, he, like, we learned that in one of the intermission things, that he went and studied yeah. with them and then pretended to commit suicide. So he could get out. Yeah. Because it was crazy. Yeah, because they were nuts. <laughs> um, so he shows up, like, in tatters. And it's like, I was robbed. They stole my robes. Mm-hmm. And this acolyte's like, oh. <laughs> and gets him like, all set up. But he, like, knows all the lingo. Yeah. So they just hooked him up with all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so now he can kind of move through the city in yeah. disguise. Because they wear masks. Mm-hmm. So that was what was stolen, he said. I right. Think. Yeah. I read that chapter a while ago. You did, so yeah. You fuzzy. actually read your stuff faster than me this time. But Except for this last chapter, I finished it today. Mm, I finished it last night. Mm, I started it last night and then I was too tired. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the interlude was just introducing this new, would you call him a mercenary? Well, he's like or a, he's kind banker? of, yeah, he's kind of like a, he's more, he's more official than a loan shark, but much more, um, Kind of more gangster, like mob boss, yeah. than an official like loan from a bank. Like he yeah. he runs this big counting house where people can go to get loans for stuff, and it's all like everyone's wearing all their rich clothes and everything. But also mm-hmm. like they have bodyguards in there that'll like throw you out and mess you, mess you up, right? If you try anything shady. Mm-hmm. So that the second chapter. Well, we got introduced to this character, and it was kind of like... Last name Maraggio. Yeah, Maraggio. And then it was basically like, he is in a way, the there's the Duke, like Nicovante, who runs like the administrative stuff for the city, and then there's the Maraggio, who is like kind of the financial uh, kingpin, although that's more like the cop is the kingpin of the city. But they keep, they keep on like comparing people to being like another Duke, like... Right. <laughs> That's just a thing. Like, if, if you're high enough, they're like, oh, he's like the other Duke of Camor. So they've got, like, the Duke Duke, which is Nicovante, and then they've got um, the Kappa, the now Kappa Raza, who is, like, the kingpin and the, mm-hmm. the crime lord, who's, like, another Duke, like, the underworld Duke. And now there's this, the Maraggio guy, who is, like, the financial Duke right. of the city. So Which, do you remember way back when I thought the Duke and the Kappa were the same character? Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's more fair now as we're meeting more, like, powerful people. And they keep comparing them to the Duke. And I'm like, that's probably why I got confused. Yeah. 
they probably made that comparison, and I was like, oh, he's the Duke. Yeah. And forgot the underworld part. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So. So that's apparently kind of the stature of this guy. And then in the next chapter, Locke is in Which the is, counting house. Yeah. And we got to kind of see Locke in action. I pretty much, I picture this as kind of like a, like a, in, in a movie, it'd be like one of those segments just kind of like a funny, like he's trying so hard yes. and just keeps failing because he they realize that they're out of clothes and they don't have any disguises. Right. And he's still wearing like half of the Grey King get up. Like he still has the gray hair and everything. Right. Um, but they lost all of their like costume stuff right. when they lit the house of Perlandro on fire. Right. So And the easiest way for them to make some money right now would be to wrap up this con on... The Don, Don Salvara from, like, the very beginning of the book. Um, but they don't have any of the Lucas Fairweight clothes anymore. Yeah. So, so there, he's literally trying to go to these people to get a loan, but instead of money, he's trying to get them to give him their clothes. Which the first one is like, no, I'm not going to give you $30 worth of clothes to borrow for $5, essentially. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it, it, not quite the exchange rate, but that's basically what was... And then he got kicked out. Yeah. And then he came back again with a slightly different... He ripped off some of his, like, fake hair on his face. And then it was just the mustache. <laughs> and tried a different guy. Yeah. And that guy almost bought into it. And then he was like, no, you're testing me. Just like that one lady was tested. And, and then I, she failed. And, like, bad things happened to her. Yeah. I know you're testing me. And then... I have beat you. Yeah, which definitely frustrated Locke. Mm -hmm. And then he got the brilliant idea, though, um, seeing, what's his name again? Uh, Miraggio. Seeing, yeah, seeing him just up in the balcony observing mm -hmm. and his and, fine clothes. And I was and like, they're like a similar build. Yeah. And I was like, are you kidding me? And I was he like, could, how are you he couldn't do get that? these little lone guys to do it. <laughs> and he's going to find a way to take the clothes off the big man himself. <laughs> <laughs> but which he does yeah the rest of the chapter is all he convinced one of the butlers to give him his clothes because mm -hmm. he was like a secret courier for the duke who needed to get a message to him but he like i don't know what the excuse was he didn't have the right get up and couldn't get close to him yeah I'm, i might be confusing the because each time it was a different story yeah. on why he needed clothes. And then, so he managed to get the clothes from a butler and gave him, like, five five crowns to just give up his clothes. And then hang out in a closet until he could come back and give him his clothes back. Yeah. So he's hanging out in the closet. And then as soon as he has the clothes, he leaves and tells the guards that this butler guy just sold his outfit to him and he is an idiot and he's there to like test the security. He literally yeah. went the, I'm here to test security route. Oh yeah. And very <laughs> successfully. Yeah. Because of what had happened with the other, the second guy, because there was apparently someone recently who had been tested in this way and yes. failed. And so he just kind of jumped on that. Um, so he makes it all the way up to Miraggio by saying that he's security. Um, right. and, and then when he gets to Miraggio, he spins it a little further yeah, and he's like, I'm, I'm here from Capa Raza. I work for him. Someone's trying to kill you. Um, I, I'm here to protect you. Yeah. And I made it all the way here. Your people are incompetent. You're going to die if you don't do what I say. <laughs> and yeah. it worked. And he managed to get his clothes by saying that he would stand in for him mm -hmm. to try to catch the assassin mm -hmm. because they're a similar build and got the clothes off his back and then left and gave some money that he pilfered from the room somewhere at somewhere along the line he managed to grab a bag of coins i forget where yeah I don't and he went either. he went back to the original butler who was then being like detained yeah. because they thought that he was in on this assassination attempt yes and he went back to that original butler and gave him like a bag of coins that was equivalent to like a year's wages for him yeah and was like you need to get out of town or they're gonna kill you sorry right. sorry for dragging you into my issues but uh, yeah but here this is the year's worth of money you can figure something else out yes sorry. Leave, leave town start a new life for yourself and then the guy takes off yep so <laughs> i was glad that he went back and did that for them i am too i was like oh no yeah lock this is bad you just ruined this man's career and life 
And it, like, he just, he was just excited for some extra coin. Yeah. Like, it went from... Make it, a couple it, extra bucks, too. It went from this guy let this person in, which is a breach of security, which would have just been, like, fired, mm-hmm. to this man is an accomplice in an assassination attempt. Right. <laughs> like, man, it escalated so fast. Yes. So, yeah, I'm glad that Locke went back and helped the guy. Yeah. But he has no intention of ever going back to the Miragio and giving him his clothes back. I don't no. think. He was just like, I got no. the clothes and now I can go be Lucas Fairweight and... Yep. So, and that's pretty much where the chapter ends. Yeah. And there was no interlude with this chapter. No interlude. So, yeah. It was weird. I was, like, expecting one. Yeah. I think this is the first time that's happened. Yeah. Where there's no interlude. So. Yeah. Oh, well. But. So, we've got, I think, within two podcast episodes, we'll be done with it. Because there's only. Yeah. You just have two sections left. There's two more. The next time, we'll go over two more chapters. And then it'll be final chapter epilogue for the last. Yeah. So. Yeah. We're almost done. Almost done. Excited. Yeah. I'm probably going to end up picking up the, or starting the second book when we're done with this. I have them. I have the second one. I don't have the third one. So. Yeah. Because I'm interested. I like these characters. I do too. And I want to know more about the girl. Yeah, I'm like, are you just not going to. Is she not going to come back? We're just going like, to mention her? Until like the randomly? next book. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. But yeah, it's been fun. Yeah, it has been. And that concludes today's discussion on The Lies of Locke Lamora. Look forward to our next discussion. Until then, happy reading.